First of all, a wonderful good evening, everybody. My name is Peter Klapper, and I'm from the University of Kent and the School of Biosciences. And I want to convince you that medicine is great. But there is something better. And I show you in the next 20 minutes what this is. Are you ready for that? Excellent. So first of all, for those of you who haven't seen it, and I know that I'm repeating myself, but there, there are a few people who haven't seen it. Where is Kent? Well, we are in the southeastern corner of the UK. That's why we call ourselves the European University, because we are very close to France and the continent. So by train, it takes you 52 minutes from the beautiful city of Canterbury to London and two and a half hours to go to Paris. Great place for shopping, food, exploring a different culture. This is the beautiful city of Canterbury. We have around 40,000 uh, inhabitants and then on top of it 50,000 students because we have two universities there and several colleges. The University of Kent which is up here on the hill has a total of 18,000 students. We have 128 Hello. We have 128 different nationalities so it is very culturally diverse. Uh, the only thing, yesterday I spoke to a student from Mauritania, and he said, do you have Mauritanian students? And I said, I don't know, because that was a little bit unusual. But I, I know that, for example, we have students from Papua New Guinea. Cool place. Our students will actually graduate from the cathedral here and that is a big, big wow, because not every university can offer you that. Here are a few nice pictures of Canterbury. I love particular this one, because that's from the high street. It's not photoshopped. That's what it looks like, really. Although it's a little bit very green. Well, it's probably camera. It's an old city, lots of tradition, uh, but has also all the modern mod cons, theater, cinema, restaurants, bars, whatever you want. This is the University of Kent, and the speciality of Kent is that we have still a college system which is similar to Oxford and Cambridge. So all colleges will be, all students will be allocated to a college when they arrive, which is great. It's a little bit like Hogwarts. And you also have Dumbledore in the colleges, like Hogwarts. They are called masters. I know that because I'm one of the masters. And my job, I, for example, look after roughly 4,000 students in terms of discipline. I make sure that they don't go completely off the rails. And also in terms of discipline, uh, discipline and welfare. So if things go wrong, if people are lonely, homesick, run out of money, have problems in general, I'm there to help and support you. So parents can sleep in peace because they know that their children will be in good hands. I work with them. This is what it looks like in the summer. You can tell it's a very relaxed and nice atmosphere. You can almost smell the barbecues. This is what it looks like in, in winter. So we do have snow sometimes, not always, but when we have, yes, it's great. So, why should somebody study 
biomedical sciences and not medicine. You are interested in biomedical sciences? You are studying medicine, already studying medicine. Oh, so I will make you cry now. No, I'll ask her to leave. <laughs> no, I will make her cry because she will realize that she's done a great degree, but there's something better out. Are you ready for it? Are you ready to cry? <laughs> no, okay, fine. Don't cry. I will make you cry, I promise you. Okay, so why study biomedical science? Now, I need to borrow this yes, just for a moment. Can you stand up for a moment? Right. Now here's a question for you. Would you agree that Yusuf and Peter are the same people? No. We are not the same. We are different, aren't we? Different, yes. Very different. Dark hair? No hair. <laughs> Looks great. Okay. Now, so we are different people. Bear that in mind. Let's think about the unthinkable. An absolutely horrible scenario, which hopefully will never happen. You, yourself, develop lung cancer. And I develop lung cancer. We are different people, right? Is our cancer the same? It's the same organ. But it's not the same because we are different people. True? True. So, in medicine, and please correct me if I say something stupid, medicine would treat the cancer like it's cancer, it's lung cancer, so we use the same treatment. But we are different people. So does it make sense to use the same treatment? Ah. Now, a biomedical scientist says they are different. The cancer is there. So we need to treat it in a different way. So we take some DNA from you, sir, analyze the gene profile and say, right, for his gene profile, we need to use treatment A. Thank you very much, by the way. For his gene, for his cancer, we need treatment A. For my gene profile, treatment A would not work. Right? So we need to use treatment B for my gene profile. That is what biomedical scientists do. They look into the detail and say, they are different. What else does a biomedical scientist do? Well, we begin to understand how life actually works. What is life? And one of the really big breakthroughs is This one here has nothing to do with biomedical sciences. It's electrical, exactly. This is actually a very primitive electronic network. It's probably what, what happens in a, in a radio, I don't know. There are different components. I think this is a transistor, is that right? Yes. This is a capacitator, you've got a, a resistor. resistor, exactly. And we know exactly what these components do. They work together and make a radio a radio. Why do I show you that? Well, actually, if you look at that, this is a biochemical network. This is happening every second in your cell. Lots of different components are interacting with, with each other, networking with each other, interacting with each other. This is actually what's going on in your phone. 
Now, we understand this because we can manipulate it. We've created phones. So, soon we will be understanding these networks. They are a little bit more complex, but conceptually, they are exactly the same as this one here. I know that because <clears throat> my dad is an electronic engineer, and he is absolutely fabulous. So if something is broken, he measures the voltage here, he measures the current here, something here, which I don't understand, and he says, oh, this component here is kaput. I need to fix this component here. Soon, in the next 10 years, biomedical scientists will be able to measure the concentration of this component here, the component here, maybe a few more components, and then say, ha, I got it. The disease is actually here. That is our understanding of biological networks. How amazing is that? All we need to do is take a little bit of blood from a patient, analyze, say, 100 components, and say, I can tell you why you feel tired in the morning. I know why I feel tired in the morning, but I'm not telling you. <laughs> Your wife's here. <laughs> no, because we have a cat at home. Yeah. And the cat insists on sleeping on my side of the bed. It has nothing to do with a disease. Well, you can call the cat a disease. We understand life. We are beginning to understand life. We are now in a position as biomedical scientists to take genes from different organisms and put these genes together. And what we can create now are totally new life forms, new living organisms. Why on earth would we want to do that? Well, just think about it. There's an oil spillage. It costs a lot of money to clear it up. But scientists, biomedical scientists, are currently engineering organisms that can eat the oil and produce it into something useful. So next time there's an oil spillage, you just get your bacteria coming in and remove it. And at the same time, produce probably a useful drug from that. How cool is that? Diet. Biomedical scientists are now in a position to analyze your genes. And they can tell you what diet would be best for you to stay healthy. There is actually a company out there I don't have any shares with this company, unfortunately, but this company is absolutely hot. It's called 23andMe, and what they do is they sell, actually, kits so that you can analyze your gene profile at home. At the moment, they can test for 100 genetic diseases. But in five, 10 years' time, it will be 1,000 diseases. It only costs you 129 pounds. And you can do that at home. It also tells you where your ancestors are from. I know my ancestors are actually from Poland and from France. I live in the UK. I'm German. Now here, we have a new DNA test that checks out what is the best diet for you. For me, the best diet is a seafood diet. I see food and I eat. 
which is not good. That's, you know. But if I want to be healthy, I can modify my diet. It tells you what would be the best exercise plan for you to be really fit and healthy. How amazing is that? This is really revolutionary. Ah, uh, here we've got something. Sickle cell disease. We've all heard about it. It's really a horrible disease that affects your blood because your blood, your red blood cells have this strange shape. If you have this disease, it's a genetic disease, if you have this disease, you don't get enough oxygen in your blood. So you're constantly <sighs> But it also protects you from malaria. So there is a trade-off. Now, when you live in the UK or in the US, there is no malaria. If you still have sickle cell, it's not nice, and it doesn't protect you from anything. But now, we have developed tools to overcome sickle cell disease to do targeted gene therapy. We have a tool which is called CRISPR Cas9. Sounds really complicated. Have you done that in, in medicine? Have you heard about that? CRISPR Cas9? No? This is, this is the big thing that's coming, that's going to hit us. Because CRISPR Cas9 is a tool that can go into a cell, cut out the DNA that is defective in sickle cell, and can repair it. Gene therapy. We will be able to overcome genetic diseases. How amazing is that? We are not going to turn people into Wolverine. From yes. In the amphibious stage, or just in adult stage, you can do this type of In both. You can do it in both. So is, is, is there a chronic uh, treatment? Uh, no. What it actually will, what it will do, actually for sickle cell uh, anemia, what you will do is you will target specifically the cells that produce red blood cells. You will fix these cells, and then it's done. You don't have to repeat the treatment, because once you fix the cells, the hematopo hematopoietic cells in the bone, in the bone marrow, if you fix these cells, if you treat these cells specifically, they will produce red blood cells that are no longer affected by sickle. What about the off offsprings of the treated person? Offsprings, it depends because sickle cell is a recessive uh, disease, so there is a good chance that 50% of your offspring won't have it. Does that make sense? We won't turn people into Wolverine, though. But we can help people with genetic diseases, with this CRISPR-Cas9. Asthma. Anyone here suffers from asthma? Great. Lucky you that you don't have asthma. I know a few people, and for them, asthma is <gasps> not nice. But the good thing is, we have biochemical, biomedical scientists have recently discovered a protein, HMGB1, which is a key player in asthma. Now, what we can do is, and what biomedical scientists do, is they develop a drug that specifically works with this protein. 
and I think it inactivates the protein. Once the protein is inactivated, there's no asthma. Easy treatment. Here's another horrible thing. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm telling you horror stories. One in three men will suffer from breast, uh, from, from breast cancer, from prostate cancer. One, two, three. Sorry, but don't worry. If you're lucky, you have the form that is not aggressive. So for most men who will develop prostate cancer, it won't kill them. They will die from something else. Yes. But you could have the aggressive form. True? How do you find the aggressive form? Again, with the 23andMe kit, for example, we take a little bit of DNA sample, check, do you have the aggressive form? If you have, what you can do is, you bring in CRISPR-Cas9 again, and fix this form of prostate cancer and turn it into the non-aggressive form. And if you think that this is just a problem for us guys, well, ladies, I'm terribly sorry, you have breast cancer. BCL1-5 gene. This gives you breast cancer. There is, again, is a very aggressive form of breast cancer. Very prominent celebrity discovered that she has this aggressive form. Do you know who I'm talking about? Angelina, Angelina Jolie. So what did she do? She had a double mastectomy. Had her breasts removed. In 10 years time, this won't be necessary. Because we can use CRISPR-Cas9 to turn this aggressive form of breast cancer into something that is no longer aggressive. Wow. We can already modify human embryos. Down syndrome. We can inactivate the, uh, uh, the additional chromosome 21. So, in 10 years, 20 years time, people will no longer suffer from Down syndrome. Do you see what I mean? We are at the beginning of a biomedical revolution. An end to aging. I said that earlier. The first person who is going to be 200, 200 years old is already born today. Not today, but is already born. So in 50 years time, we will be able to make, to allow people to live much longer and be healthy. Wouldn't you like to be 80, 90, 150? 200? Of course, we have to discuss the ethical implications. It's a big thing. But with all these tools that we develop, these are tools, like a knife. A knife can be used to do amazing cooking, or it can be used to kill your neighbor. The decision is up to you. The biomedical re revolution will come with a lot of problems and issues. But we, as a human race, are able to discuss 
and use these things, hopefully, responsibly. The point that I want to make is biomedical sciences is something that is very, very interesting. It will not replace medicine, so you're safe. But it will complement medicine. We still need doctors, no doubt about it. But we also need biomedical scientists who will push the research, push these tools. This is only the beginning. We are standing at the cusp of an extremely exciting new era that will change humankind. Thank you very much. Any questions?